Hey guys, how's it going? We're back here. This is part two of the video. Uh, so far we got the GT40 um, in upper and lower intakes on. We got it all back assembled. Uh, we still got to work on a little bit of an idle surge, but we'll get to that. I just uh, got to get the radiator in so I can let it idle long enough. So today we're going to be installing this nice four core alloy works uh, radiator with electric fans. I'm really excited about this. One nice big beefy unit. Here, I'll place the ad right here, and you can get 5% off on this if you click on the link below. All right, I'm back. We did a little bit of wiring. Um, this was the only piece of wire that I had to use for my own supply. Um, everything else, the wires are long enough to uh, wire this sucker in. All right, basically you got the two, you have a blue and a black on each one of these. Blue is the power, black is the uh, the ground here. So you combine the two blacks into one, which is this ground, which is going to run to the battery. The two blues go into one, which is this little plug right here, which will then connect to this blue wire. Um, let's see, the black wire here, this goes to the uh, sending unit I put in, you, you'd have to watch the other video where I put the sending unit into the back of the intake over there. On all these Fords there's a plug that's not used, it has a uh, square head on it, and you got to use some heat and everything and paint to get it off, but I got it off, and it just screwed right in, I didn't even need an adapter, so that's where the sending unit is. Red wire is to the battery, which I already connected to the battery. And the white wire, there goes the relay. Forgot to mention that. I mounted the relay in an existing hole that was on the firewall right here. And so we're good there. That fits nice. Battery moves around. Um, I still have to put the fuse in. But there's a 30 amp fuse over there. But the white wire goes to keyed power. And what I did was basically, this is for the uh, coolant low reservoir. The red wire here, that's your power source. So I just connected it onto that. So we should be good there. And I'm going to run the ground that's from the, the wire that I showed you before. The ground's going to go, I'm just going to put it on the battery like this one. Or I could drill a hole in somewhere and put it there. It's easier just to run it right, right to the ground on the battery. Easy peasy. All right, now, um, I already fitted the radiator once. It's a drop-in deal. So this will just drop right in. Um, so far, I haven't seen anything that needs a modification. But we'll see. I'm about to throw it in right now. So I'll be back. All right, I was fit fitting the uh, radiator into the uh, engine bay. And um, I noticed I won't be able to put my overflow tank on. Um, so I had to insert a hose for now. And from what I read online, this is uh, acceptable. It works, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so we're going to run this hose for an overflow. Um, I read a million comments online saying that a lot of people do it. But uh, it's really not. I'd rather have an overflow tank, to be honest with you. So at this point in time, we're just going to still continue to throw it in. And I'm going to drive it around like this. But I am going to look for an overflow tank, uh, either going to mount it. From what I read online, I'd have to pull the wheel well out inside the fender and stuff one there. Um, maybe I can make room depending on what size overflow tanks I get. So uh, that's something to look out for. Um, I know Alloy Works does sell overflow tanks. Nice uh, stainless steel. It has nice metal ones like the, look like the radiator. But an overflow tank, of course. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take a look and see what they have. Um, and we'll hook up one of those, or I'll find something somewhere that I can make fit into the situation. So, until then, uh, let's get this thing installed and go from there. Just in case you had an automatic, you do have the ports right here for it. But, being mine's a stick, it, don't, it doesn't apply to me. So, alright then, let me get this thing going and uh, we'll be back. Alright guys, it's the next day here. I ran into some problems with my uh, electrical connectors. So I had to take untape everything that I did. I found my soldered uh, connectors right here. 
So we got everything hooked up correctly right now. I'm still gonna tape everything off, put it in wire loom. But we wanna hear the fans turn on. So I got it running. Um, my rough idle problem turned out to be my IAC, idle air control valve. I took it off, I cleaned it out with brake fluid, put it back on. She seems to be running pretty good right now. So we're just waiting for it, for this to heat up. And here we go. Let's see. Yeah, it's still pretty cool. We'll let it idle for a bit. And just think, when I'm done with all this, I still gotta uh, drain all the, the water out of it and put the regular antifreeze in. So far, there's no leaks or anything that I could find. The intake gasket isn't leaking into the oil. So we're good there. I was concerned about that. I don't wanna arc it out on the battery here. So yeah, when the fans kick on, I will uh, turn this thing back on. So until then, hold up, hold tight. It'll only be a second for you guys. All right, fans finally kicked on. See where we're at on the gauge. So basically, it kicked on uh, about the halfway point on the gauge, which is about 185, 190. I'm not sure if I like that. Now, where's that box? must be here somewhere I was gonna look up that box that uh, that thermostat that turns the fan on and see if I can order one that's uh, a little bit lower like a 160 but yeah it's on fans kicked on it's bringing the temperature down Yeah, I really should clean my cluster. This thing's been sitting a while. It's all dirty inside. And we got leaves stuck to the hood. <laughs> so yeah, looks like fans are good. So all I got to do is button this up now. Permanently uh, wire everything. And we're good. So I'll show you guys what that looks like in a minute. So all right, bye-bye. Just to show you guys, it's like a minute later. And it brought the gauge right down. That's where it should be all the time. So, all right. We might just leave the 185, 190 th uh, thermostat switch in. We'll see. I'll drive it around a bit and see if I like it. We'll go from there. If not, if I can find a 160, she's going in. So then, all right, let me get all this wired up. Bye-bye. All right, fellas. We're all set here. This is now done. It's running good. Everything's all buttoned up down here. Nice clean install. She key forties on, she idles good. Everything's okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Um I even reset the TPS on this. Um it's timed. Yeah, she's good to go now. So um yeah, that's it. Next video will probably be of us beating the crap out of this thing somewhere. I gotta wait till I got one of my buddies with me so you know someone can hold the camera and we'll take it for a ride so that'll be in the next video at least see how she goes you know it's nothing crazy I remember it's a stock 302 with the headers and an intake so I mean, <laughs> I mean how fast do you expect it to be you know but still it's a fun car it's a Mustang 5 speed and they've always been fun so uh, yeah we're gonna end the video here I want to thank Alloy Works for their uh, support giving me the radiator um, I forget, there's a code word and something to get 5% off this radiator. I'll be in the uh, description below with a couple links. So there you go. Um, it's a good radiator, well built, runs nice and cool on it, the fans work good. So there you go. And um, so that's it. So I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.